and welcome back to another episode of the Town Morning News. To kick off the last day before spring break, we've got a great show for you today. That's right, with a story about China's two-month quarantine. As well as a look at how a member of the CB community is helping in the fight to end the coronavirus, and one way that this virus is affecting the CB community. All this and more on episode 69 of the Town Morning News. Three, two, take it. California stay-at-home order, but what you might not know is how Chinese citizens have dealt with their two-month-long quarantine. KBFT's Angel Cao brings us more. A battle with an invisible enemy begins in January of 2020, and the enemy is COVID-19. COVID-19 is a pandemic caused by severe respiratory coronavirus disease. Instead of getting to know the COVID-19 in the United States, let's take a look at the first outbreak of this virus, which is China. I talked to my Chinese friend to bring you some update of how COVID-19 affects China in the past two months. Uh, I think it's a serious virus and it's a disaster of human. Everyone should take care of themselves and uh, remembering to uh, remember to wear the masks when you go out. It's detrimental to the business and the economy, but it also enables us to, uh, to learn how to deal with loneliness, which may be very essential, especially when we first joined the workforce. Everything got shut down in China, China. and every and city started to, start to disinfect. People stay People home stay spending home weeks and weeks, and weeks of quarantine. quarantine. I have been quarantined since, um, since the Spring Festival around the January 23rd, I think. So it's um, nearly two months. The situation used to be serious, like everyone is very um, panicked, but now it, it but now it was becoming better. But we still need to wear the masks, and when we when we are going out, and when we come back, we need to prepare the alcohol. Staying at home also have some inconveniences. Since we are recommended to stay at home, I cannot meet my friends, and I can hardly eat at restaurants because most of them are closed. I don't go to school, but we have online classes. I think it negatively affects my study because the app we use for those courses does not allow us to open the camera and have immediate contact with teachers. So it's, so it's quite hard to stay focused, especially when I can only hear the teacher's voice. Uh, but it also has pros like um, I don't need to spend more than two hours a day on daily commute. And the online classes have playbacks so that I can listen to it multiple times. Uh, I- People are under a horrible situation. However, they still find ways to keep a good sense of humor. And- uh, this has been Angel's Hall, reported by the Taiwan Morning News. Hey, Mariana, what's the best item to protect us from COVID-19? Well, that have to be a mask, of course. Well, luckily, a former CB art teacher, Mrs. Slakey, is making homemade masks to help in the fight against the coronavirus. That's amazing. Let's take a look. An emergency is unfolding inside New York City hospitals as health workers run out of critical supplies to treat patients, causing them to make drastic decisions. We are being asked to reuse and recycle single-use respirators and surgical masks. Mayor de Blasio warning the situation is dire, that there's only a two to three week supply left. There has been a growing need for medical supplies in hospitals ever since the outbreak of COVID-19. People across the U.S. are coming up with solutions to help, such as Mrs. Slakey, a past CB art teacher who has decided to sew her own masks and donate them to hospitals in need in order to contribute to the situation in a positive way. We need some masks. It's something that I can do. You know, you feel so helpless in this situation. Hospitals aren't getting the masks, and so... You know, instead of complaining, try to be part of the solution. To that concept of um, enter to learn and leave to serve. For those interested, there are many ways to learn how to make these masks on your own. Mrs. Slakey shares some useful websites and locations that provide the instructions and materials to do so. Seamstress United, it's on Facebook, and they give a lot of tips and uh, it's a great network to go through. Uh, Joanne's does it. 
um, they actually give out free kits. So if you go by there, do, they'll do a curbside. You can do a pickup. There's, there's supplies. There's elastic, which is very hard to come by at this point. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, thread and then the instructions. And the instru instructions are pretty good. Lastly, Mrs. Slakey shares her own personal advice on how we as students can ease the situation at hand, especially for CB alum who are currently working at the front lines. For me, this, the best thing is to stay home. A lot of the students that I had are now serving. They're nurses, one's a respiratory therapist, uh, and they're on the front lines. You know, Allison Judy is class of 99. She's on the front line. Jimmy Pearson, he's class of 02. He's a He's head of paramedics. Those are all alumni, and they're on the front lines. They went out, and they're serving now. They're, they're doing the LaSalle mission of serving the community, mm -hmm. and it's our job to protect them. This has been Victoria Abensato reporting for the Talon Morning News. Starting this week, all parents and guardians will be notified through an automated system if a student has been marked absent to one or more of his or her classes. To avoid being marked absent, make sure to take all attendance quizzes every day by 12 noon. Make sure to review the distance learning day's requirements on attendance if you are marked absent. Message your teacher if you don't understand why you were marked absent. If you are unable to take any of the attendance quizzes by noon, please contact the attendance office through email at spearson at cbhs-sacramento.org or call 916-733-3625 to get an excused absence. And now on a more serious issue, let's talk about COVID-19. We know that you've been hearing about coronavirus constantly, whether it be in the news, on TikTok, or from your parents, but please bear with us and listen up for more important information. The coronavirus is extremely serious, and we all need to be mindful of our own part in the outbreak. Although it is tempting to leave your house to go hang out with friends, it is extremely dangerous, and by being in contact with other people that you don't live with, you are threatening your life and the lives of your family members. The best way to combat this virus is to stay home, away from people you don't live with, only leaving for an absolutely essential reason. And if you leave the house, make sure to wear gloves and masks, stay six feet away from people at all times, and wash your hands and use hand sanitizer frequently. The sooner we all do our part in lowering the curve, the sooner this can all be over and we can return to school. Now for some helpful reminders on how to stay safe. We'll be right back after this short break. The United States now has the highest number of cases of the COVID-19 virus in the world, which is why it is crucial now more than ever that we practice social distancing. Social distancing does not mean just sitting inside on your couch, watching TV, or playing video games. You can practice social distancing by checking in and taking groceries to your grandparents or other elderly people in your community, but still making sure to take the proper precautions while doing so. You can be socially distant while painting or finding other fun projects to do around your house and turning ordinary things into art. While practicing social distancing, it is important to exercise and get outside. Both of these things can be accomplished by taking a walk around your neighborhood. Another way to pass time is to simply take a drive and listen to music. This is a way for you to get outside of your house, keeping yourself and others safe. Another key aspect of keeping socially distant is staying connected to friends and family. This can be accomplished by a Zoom meeting or a FaceTime call. While this is a challenging time for all of us, please make sure that you're taking care of yourself in your community. Just because you don't have symptoms does not mean you cannot infect others. The faster we take these precautions, the faster we can start to get back to normal. Class Council elections are still underway, Falcons. Voting ends today at 1.30 p.m., so don't forget to submit your ballot. Take a look at all the candidate speeches and posters on Schoology. Teachers may use their block set for a live class or group discussion, so be sure to keep checking Schoology for updates from your teachers regarding block day meetings. Even though we are doing online school right now, the counselors are still available to help. Message them if you need them, and they will schedule a Zoom meeting with you if you would like. As school has been shut down indefinitely, spring sports have also been canceled. The CIF has announced that all spring sports are on hold through Friday, May 1st, but have not determined anything beyond this date. KBFT reporter Layla Arola spoke with some CB athletes on how they are feeling about this devastating news. We'll be meeting with superintendents from across the state tomorrow in Sacramento uh, to further those discussions with more nuance and specificity and detail. Coronavirus has not only canceled schools around the world,
but it has also postponed and canceled the seasons of many sports. I talked to Christian Brothers athletes Jackson Malco and Chloe Decker to find out how their sports cancellations have affected them. Yeah, well, the season's been affected by the coronavirus. Just like it's canceled the whole thing, and a bunch of our the, the seniors on our team might never get to play baseball again just because of this. Like they wouldn't have known that or the game we played last week against McClatchy would, would have been the last game. Well, seniors are constantly texting there saying like, "We miss you, boys. Um, hopefully, we get to play again one day." My season for school has been canceled, yes, so that means I cannot train with my CB coaches, I cannot do CB track meets, even, like, um, track meets that I can do unattached, where, like, I don't have to be part of a school, they're all shut anyway, so I can't really do any track meets, so now it's just training. Like, my whole life is, like, going, trying to go around this virus, so, like, I'm still training, I'm just, it's just, there's no meets being held at schools because they're shut down, so I'm trying to find schools that are open, and um, I kind of like that, because of that reason, I can focus a lot on my schoolwork, and then when I'm done with that, I can come on, Chloe, come transfer on, Chloe, to come track on, and find a track to train at. The benefits with, like, this situ- the situation that's going on really is that, like, I can get up at a decent hour. I don't have to get up at 6.30 every day. I can get more sleep. Kids are less stressed. I could say you could focus more on your schoolwork and, like, have, like, your own agenda of, like, when you want to get things done. So it, like, prepares you more for college. But, I mean, I, I'm, like, a firm believer in, like, let, let us, just let us play. Um, but if it's truly necessary to keep other people safe, I would have no problem with the season being canceled. This has been Layla Arola reporting for the Talon Morning News. That concludes our last show for a while, CB. We miss producing shows in the studio, but we'll continue to keep you updated after spring break. Even though spring break is here, remember that it is very important to socially distance yourselves. This is a health precaution for not only yourselves, but also for the safety of your loved ones. We know it hasn't been easy adjusting to this new type of lifestyle, but it isn't permanent. We know you miss school as much as we do, especially the senior class. But we're all in this together. Have Have a safe safe and and sane spring break, break, CB. CB.